Hey guys, Caleb Logic of DIY Video Guy here, and I'm actually here with Phil Ebner of Video School Online, and this is the second video in an intro to After Effects series. The first one we did, if you haven't watched that, click the I or go down in the description to watch that first video about how to make After Effects not so scary. I already feel less intimidated by it after we filmed that little intro to it. So in this one, we're gonna be talking about tools. So what the tools are, how to use them, and then keyframing, which is how you add points in the composition to add motion. So yeah. let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's look at the basic tools. Uh, we're here back in After Effects again, and your toolbar is up here at the top. And you see a bunch of different tools. And again, there's some that are more advanced, roto brushes, there's erasers and clone stamping brush tools, kind of like in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. The ones we're going to be looking at are the selection tool, the pan behind tool, the shape tool, which is called the rectangle tool or one of these other tools. And you'll notice that I clicked and held and it brought up more options for this tool. Yeah, ones that have the little arrow in the corner. Exactly, exactly. So that's, those are the shape tools. We have a pen tool, which we'll quickly look at, and then the text tool. So first, the basic is the selection tool. And this is your basic mouse pointer. This is what you use to click and drag and move around objects. Mm -hmm after you use the text tool, after you use the shape tool, it's important to go back to the selection tool. And that's the V keyboard shortcut, just like it is in Premiere. Yep, exactly. And so all of these do have keyboard shortcuts. You can hover over them, and you can see what the shortcut mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump over to the shape tools. So if I click the rectangle tool, the first thing you'll notice is that you have a fill and stroke option up here. The fill is the color of your shape. And so if you click within this color, right now it's set to red, it opens up the shape fill color module, and we can change the color to pick a nicer blue color, like something like that. And you can then click OK. That is now your shape fill. Mm -hmm. The stroke is the border around your shape. And right now it's set to white and two pixels. So if you don't want a shape, uh, stroke, you can click and drag this to the, the left and set it to zero, mm -hmm. or you can just click within it and set it to whatever number you want. And again, you can click the white border right here to change the color. So if we do want somewhat of a peachish red color and a five pixel stroke, that would be how we would do it. So now we have our text, or our shape tool. We move into our composition. We're working right within our composition, mm -hmm. and we click and drag. Similar to in Photoshop, you just click and drag to create a shape. Now, one good tip is if you hold the Shift key down, you are creating a perfect shape, so a perfect square, a perfect circle mm -hmm. if you're using the ellipse tool. And so this creates this shape. If I let go, now we have this shape, and we have a new shape layer. So this is the first time we've seen anything on our timeline below. We have this shape layer. It has a bunch of new stuff down here. Mm -hmm. It says contents. Getting scared again. <laughs> Getting scared. Don't get scared. There's not too much. Uh, there's different things. But again, with After Effects, there's too much here that you don't really need to know to really make some awesome effects with mm -hmm. it. So. So just ignore the buttons you don't really know yet? Ignore the buttons you don't really know yet. Um, I know that's kind of hard because you want to Click around, Click and, around and see what happens, but really just ignore them, and I'll go through the ones that you need to know to, to just get started. So this is the shape tool. I think the one button that will help us right now is this little eyeball on the far left. Mm -hmm. This turns on and off the visibility of this layer. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is this little triangle here, which opens up the drop-down menu, and you can dive deeper into the settings of whatever layer it is here. So here we have a shape layer. Whatever layer you have text or photos, there's mm -hmm. different options down there. And we'll look at those in just a minute. So turning on and off the visibility, that drop down arrow, because there's even more options. Mm -hmm. Those are the two main things you kind of need to know. Yeah, but see, just by clicking that, you don't have to see it. It's not as intimidating. So go ahead and close that down right now. And actually, what I'm going to do is just delete this layer for now. So I'm just going to select it, hit delete on my keyboard. The pen tool, which is an amazing tool to create shapes with, custom shapes, is something similar to the shape tool. You set your colors and strokes up here. I'm just going to turn off my stroke by setting it to zero. And here we can just click and drag and create cool, funky shapes. 
So what it's doing is you are kind of picking points and then as you click and hold, you, that line's moving to kind of adjust the shaping of it. Yeah. So and you, then it fills in the middle. Yeah, so you were good at spotting what I was doing there. So I'm going to delete this and restart just to show you what I was doing. So I'm clicking. If I don't click and drag while I click, it just creates a point. Okay. So you see before it was curved edges, mm -hmm. curved points. I just clicked around and you want to make sure Those that are straight now. They're yeah. straight now, and whenever you create a shape, you want to finish it. So wherever you start, see I'm, now I'm clicking and dragging, and it creates more curved mm -hmm. edges. I want to finish the shape, so I click back at the start of the shape. Okay, gotcha. And after you've created the shape, you have these tools to uh, change the way that the curve looks. Mm -hmm. Each point has these little Bezier accent marker things that mm -hmm. you can click and drag mm -hmm. to change the shape of the tool. Gotcha. So sometimes that zooms out if I scroll down. So I'm going to go back up to 100%. Okay. So that's the pen tool. I'm going to delete that. And then th we have the horizontal type tool. So this is our text tool. You just click that. You tech click in your composition window. Mm -hmm. And then you start typing. So hi. And from there, it's really small. So what we can do is use our character panel to increase the size of our text. So if I go ahead and just try to increase the text, it's not going to do anything right now. What I have to do is go back and click this layer down here. Mm -hmm. So that's selecting all the text that I just typed. And then I can change the settings. So the pixel size, you can go there. You can change the font here, whatever we want to do. We can change the paragraph setting, so if we want it centered, mm -hmm. left align, right align, all that kind of stuff. So these are text layers. Now actually, one thing I would want to do is open up a picture. Do we have an, a picture that we can import to this project? Yeah, so you can double click there. Yep, to right. import, we can double click or just right click and s click import. Let's go import. to Dropbox. And we'll go to, does that have to be any image? Can any image anything? will work. Yeah. And we'll just go to images. We'll go to an old client behind the scenes photo. We'll go to Ghana. We'll go to Ghana. Ghana. OK, so now this has been brought into our project. A quick thing to note, we can rename all of these things in our project. So if we select it, press return, or enter on our keyboard, we can rename it okay, to gotcha. whatever. So that might help. And we can also create bins to organize. So I can create a new bin with this bin folder down here, call this photos, and then drop our pictures or whatever assets into mm -hmm. our folders. I always recommend trying to be as organized as possible yeah. because you'll have lots and lots of assets. So the reason I brought this picture in, it, picture in is to show you our pan behind tool and some of our other transform tools that we'll have down in our timeline. So to bring in an asset, I can either just click and drag it into our composition window or just right down into our timeline. So in our timeline, you see that this photo was added. You'll notice that it created this bar, this purple bar, but it's not all the way to the left of our timeline. So if I move my time indicator over here to the left, you see it disappears. That's because it's not throughout this entire timeline and this entire work area. So I'm going to extend this by just clicking the left and extending it past the left part of our timeline so that it's throughout our entire timeline. So quickly, let's go drop down this menu, try to get rid of our fears. And for most assets like pictures and text, you'll only have this transform option down here. So we're going to go dive into that one level deeper. And so all layers will have these set, this set of tools. You have your opacity, rotation, scale, position, and anchor point. And you can see if I change any of these by clicking and dragging to the left or right, you'll see it adjust in the composition window. So for opacity, if I drop down, you can see it drop mm -hmm. to be more opaque or less opaque. Rotation, same thing. I'm just going to undo that with Command-Z. That's on a Mac. If you're using a PC, it's a Control-Z. Scale, same thing. Position, this moves it around. You can also move it around by using the selection tool and just moving it around. And you can see these numbers changing. And then we have anchor point. And that's why I brought this picture in, because 
we have this tool called the pan behind tool, which allows us to move the anchor point to really anywhere on this image or outside of this image even. The anchor point is what all these different properties, transformation properties are attached to. So right now, you see this little anchor point in the middle. It's hard to see, but it's a little circle with four lines coming out each side. If we scale up and down, you can see it's scaling from that anchor point. We can see that if we rotate, it's rotating around that anchor point. Now, if we take this pan behind tool and we click our anchor point in the middle, you can see now I'm dragging it. You can't do that with the selection tool. You have to use the pan behind tool. And I can drag it down to, say, the, let's do the bottom left. Now, if I adjust any of these settings, say the scale, wow, look at that. That's scaling from the bottom left, or we're rotating around the bottom left now. And so it's important to use the pan behind tool because when we're animating different layers, we'll want to adjust from the center of an image, from the center, the right side, left side, all mm -hmm. kinds of parts of, mm -hmm. of our layers. So these are the basic transform properties that you have in every layer that you add. So that's a lot of stuff. We're going to dive into keyframes, but yeah. is there anything with these tools that is a little confusing, or are you good to go? No, I think these are the these are kind of the fundamentals of After Effects because most of the stuff in After Effects that are graphics are either shapes or some other sort of thing like text. So you kind of need to know the foundation of being able to make those and then animate them is kind of the next step. So yeah, let's go into keyframing next. So a keyframe, as Caleb was mentioning before, is a point in time where you say to After Effects or whatever program you're using, you're saying, at this particular point in time, I want my layer to look like this, to do this. And so for an example, let's take this picture. I'm going to scale it down to 30% or so. I'm just going to type in 30. Then I'm going to move it over here to the left side of the frame. To set a keyframe, what I can do is click any of these stopwatches here on the left side of these properties. And there, you'll see these stopwatches in all sorts of things. If you add effects to this layer, you'll see different key, keyframe-able effects mm -hmm. in your effects controls. But for now, let's just say position. I'm just going to click that stopwatch. And you'll notice that a couple things happen. A little diamond appeared right here on our timeline. And then there's another little diamond here on the left side of the position. This is a keyframe, and it's saying to After Effects that at zero, frame, zero seconds, I want this photo to be at this position. And I'm also going to say I want it to be scaled at 30%. Now if I go to one second and I move this photo, I'm going to move it to the right, and I'm going to actually hold the Shift button so that it stays locked on that X axis. And I'm going to just move it to about the center. And then I'm also maybe going to increase the scale a little bit. And you notice that since the anchor point is at the bottom left, it kind of looks a little funky. So I'm going to move it back into the center, something like this. So now what it's saying is that at 0 seconds, it's at here. At 1 second, it's here. What happens in between? We have an animation from one position and scale to the next position and scale. So keyframes are basically setting the points where you have properties of what you want it to be, and then it does the calculation and the math in the middle, and you don't have to do it frame by frame. Exactly. And this is really the basis of almost everything you're going to be doing in After Effects. And you can make some very complex animations with it. I'll just go through one other thing right here in our timeline that will make motion look a little bit better. Two things, actually. One is adding motion blur. So motion blur is more natural. If something's moving in front of you, if you're waving your hand in front of you, you don't see it clearly every step of the way. It's, mm -hmm. it's blurred. And so we want to add that to a lot of our motion. You can do that. You have these three little columns right here. This one on the far left with three little circles is the motion blur one. We'll click that. And then we'll enable the motion blur, because while it has motion blur on this layer, for the whole timeline, it's not enabled yet. So we'll enable it with this Motion Blur Enable button right here. Now if we play through this, it's going to have to render out. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit blurrier. blurrier. You'll see 
it even more if I make this animation faster, which I am doing by just selecting these two keyframes, moving them earlier. So now it has more distance to travel, so it has to be a little blurrier. Exactly. So it's faster. So it's going to render out. It's going to play a lot blurrier. Mm -hmm. The very last thing that I'm going to show you to make motion just look a little bit better in After Effects is changing the speed of how these keyframes work. Right now, it's going linearly. It's the same speed from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. But motion doesn't work like that in the natural world. If you're running, you start up, you kind of slow into your run, and then you slow down when you're stopping. And that's how we want to create motion af in After Effects. So what I'll do is select all these keyframes by dragging over them, right-clicking them, and you see that you have this keyframe assistant option. And what we're going to do is click this Easy Ease button. So Easy Ease is telling After Effects that we want it to slow into this motion and slow out of the motion. So it starts a little bit slower and then it ends a little slower. And it gives it more of like a pop. And I just think it looks a lot better in terms of motion graphics and design. Mm -hmm. so. It looks a little less fake. It looks more like a bouncing ball, or at the top, it kind of slows before it falls, and then when it hits, it kind of slows again. Yeah, and I actually have a tutorial on creating a bouncing ball on my channel, oh, so you should check it out. So that was a lot of stuff. I know it's like you dive into After Effects. I think it's going to take a few minutes to explain this, but it ends up taking 15. And so hopefully you guys are still with us. And is there anything else that this kind of confuses you? Next, we're going to be diving into your lower third, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. going to be really great to actually see a real project using all the tools that we're learning right now. But is there anything else? That so knowing what you've taught so far, if someone only watched video one and video two, what kinds of things could you do so far? I think a lot of things is just bringing in text. You can use these basic keyframes that I just taught you to have it slide in. Have and text slide in. You can do an animation with where it grows really fast. You can just use After Effects as a better designer to add photos with text at the same time. Um, so that's kind of the basics of what you can do. In the next video, we're learning more of the actual practical motion graphics of it. Like so, layering stuff and when to bring things in. And yes. Kind of so it's going to be a little bit more advanced, but it'll be fun. So if you're still watching, thanks for making it this far. I know this, this software is really complex, and uh, that's why I had Phil come give a little intro to it because I'm still trying to learn it. And you should definitely go check out Phil's YouTube channel, Video School Online. He has a lot of After Effects videos on that channel for really specific things. Like I know you have a video just on anchor points, and you have videos on lower thirds and other kinds of graphics or text on a line and stuff. And he also has some free and paid courses as well on his website, videoschoolonline.com. So thanks, Phil, for joining me in this one. What are we going to talk about in the next video? In the next video, we're actually creating a lower third. We're actually recreating Caleb's lower third that he uses. And I think really just practicing and going through projects like this, that's how I learned. And that's how I put out a lot of tutorials on my own channel. So yeah, check it out. But in the next tutorial, it's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm excited for it. So we'll see you there. Cool. See you guys there.